Hey, this is Naresh Ki and welcome back to my video series on the 7 deadly sins of affiliate marketing. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering the second deadly sin of affiliate marketing, which is not being clear enough about the numbers that affect your affiliate marketing game. So in a few moments, I'm going to be sharing with you the number one number that you should really look at and the seven different numbers that are under it that all affect and impact that overall one number. Okay, you all might have seen in a lot of ads uh, where people are pushing or promoting uh, various tools and various courses on online marketing that they would say things like, uh, you know, we've had this person who's downloaded this tool or that person who's, you know, taken this course and in the matter of a week or 10 days, they made around a thousand dollars. Now, all that sounds really good, but it's really a little misleading because sales is nothing but a vanity metric. It's a number that looks really good, but it isn't really indicative of your performance as an affiliate marketer and how much you're making out of it, right? The key thing to look at, the number one number that you should really look at when it comes to your affiliate marketing performance is a number called ROI, which is return on investment, right? This really means that if I put in $100 into my business, how much am I able to take out of the business? having taken into account all the different costs and all the different other heads of expenses and so on, right? So ROI or return on investment is really the one key number, which is the bottom line of how your business is performing. And this number is made up of various numbers along the way. There are a lot of other numbers that all add up or impact and, you know, have a final effect on what the final ROI is, right? So if you want to look at it, there are two aspects to this whole ROI story. There is the investment aspect and there is the return aspect. So for a certain amount of investment, how much return do I get? So let's get a little deeper into each of these numbers, right? So for investment, basically it means all about what are the different costs that I'm incurring in the business. And there are broadly two heads. There are various other heads, which are, but they're not the important ones. The important heads are basically two. One is the traffic costs which is the amount of money that I need to send in order to send traffic to that particular offer that I'm promoting, right? And the other are the tool costs. Now, tool costs will include stuff like the cost for your autoresponders, your funnel builders, your tracking tools, or your hosting. Uh, and, you know, if you're an advanced marketer, there are various other tools that will come into play, such as your webinar platforms and so on and so forth. But broadly, these are the critical tools that at any stage, of your affiliate marketing journey, you will have to face in terms of tools, right? So there are the traffic costs and there are the tool costs. There are some other heads that I'm not including, such as, you know, the cost of setting up your business and so on uh, in this whole thing. These are the two main heads of investment. Now, coming to the return part of it, there are again two broad heads, okay? The first one is the commissions. Because for every sale that you make, you're actually making a commission, which is a percentage of that sale. So if you're actually selling a product worth $1,000, you're not going to be getting those $1,000 unless you're selling one of those rare products that sell at a, you know, a 100% commission. You'll probably getting, you know, a $30, 30%, 40%, 50% commission. So that's really what your revenue is. So how much commission you're making is one of the key metrics. And the other set of key metrics that you will need to look at all the way are what I call the conversion metrics. This is made up of various other submetrics along the way, such as your CTR, which is your click-through ratio for the ad, the opt-in rate, the open rate, and the overall sales conversion. So let's take a deeper look at all of these numbers. All right, so in general, a simple funnel would look like this, right? There is you as an affiliate marketer who's on the left-hand side, and you would be putting out an ad where people would click and they would then go on to something like an opt-in page where people would feed in their details uh, such as your, your name and your email ID and so on. And from there, some people would then directly go on to the offer out of which maybe one to two percent may actually end up purchasing or buying that particular offer. But of the people who have gone to the opt-in page, a certain percentage will actually uh, you know, feed in the details and the rest will just bounce off. So the percentage that feeds in those details will actually be captured. The details will be captured and stored in something called an autoresponder, which then allows you to send a lot of mails in the future that you have written out 
uh, to these people, some of which will be value mails, mails that you are sending to them just to provide value and to help them get their results they want. And some will be pitch mails, mails that you are sending to them in order to promote the offer on an ongoing basis, right? So when you do that, then a lot many more people would convert and they would actually end up purchasing over the long run. And all of that will then add up to your commission. This is broadly how the model works, right? Now let's look at the key numbers that will come into play at various stages along the funnel. The first thing that will come into play is the CTR, which stands for the click through ratio. Basically, it means that if a hundred people see the ad, how many of them are actually likely to click on it and move further from there, right? So the norm is about two to five. Well, five percent is actually considered to be very good, but two to five percent is a range in which an ad should operate for it to be effective, right? Uh, depending on the category that you're in and so on. So if you, let's assume that you've put out an ad which works in this range and you, you know, it's actually got a click through ratio of two to five percent. And let's say that with that, you manage to get a thousand clicks. Now, when you send a thousand clicks over to the opt-in page, the norm is between 20 to 30 percent of the people will actually opt in, which is they will feed in their details, the name and the, uh, you know, the email ID and so on, right? That's a norm. Now, if, if you've got a terrific opt-in page, then there are pages which capture even 50, 60 percent. But this is the norm. 20 to 30 percent is the overall norm, right? So let's assume you sent over a thousand clicks to the opt-in page, which means roughly about 300 people will opt in. Now you have the details of those 300 people in your autoresponder. Now, when you start sending them various mails and you start pitching to them about the offer, right? Again, the next metric that comes into play is something called the open rate. Because if you're going to send mails to 300 people, all 300 people are not going to be opening that particular mail, right? About 10 to 15 percent is the norm, right? So uh, if you're going to be sending them three mails, then each time maybe 10 to 15 percent of the people open it, which means you roughly get about 40 to 50 opens per mail on a base of 300, uh, which means that if you send them about four mails overall, then, you know, pitching the product, on an average you should be getting about 200 opens. Now, out of that, only a certain percentage will click and finally, only a certain percentage will end up buying. The norm again, which is the third metric over here, the norm that comes into play, if you've got a good list and an engaged list, a list that sees value uh, and is opening your mails, then the norm is about 15 to 20 percent of the people finally may end up buying, which means that finally, on a base of about 200, if you're saying 15 percent, 200 opens that is, if you're saying about 15%, then about 30 sales is what you can expect, okay? Now, these are the key metrics. At this point, there are some two or three things that one should point out. Number one is, as your list grows larger, because right now you've got 300, but it's not going to remain at 300, right? Over a period of time, your list will grow larger. As your list grows larger, your sales will obviously go up because you're now going to be applying that conversion rate on a much larger base. So your sales should go up over a period of time. But however, the second point is, it is noticed that over a period of time, your open rates will drop because a lot of people over a period of time will tend to become less engaged and so on. And especially if your base is increasing, then your open rates will drop. So in order to make sure that your open rates remain at a healthy 10 to 15%, you need to really keep them engaged and provide value to the people on your list so that that conversion metric remains healthy as well, okay? And the third thing is all about the dollars and cents. So let's look at some dollars and cents kind of a rough calculation over here, okay? So if you're going to be sending a thousand clicks, a rule of thumb, going by a rule of thumb, roughly one dollar per click is where it is now. It could be more depending on the category and depending on the kind of competition in the category. But for the purposes of simplification, let's say it's, it's roughly about, say, one dollar per click. So to send a thousand clicks over, it's going to cost you, say, a thousand dollars. Having gone through that entire funnel and the various conversions, the various dropouts at various points, if you finally end up with 30 sales, what it really means 
is that it's going to you've got to make at least $33 per sale. $33 per sale as commission for yourself for you just to make your traffic costs back. On top of it, there are the other costs. So, I mean, if I were to add on your tool costs and you know the other stuff, you may, you may need to make something like $35 to maybe $40 back per sale. Now, again, over a period of time, this will change because as, as, you, as you get more and more sales for the same amount of traffic cost, right? Because this month it's 300, next month your base may be 600, maybe 1000, maybe 1500. And again, if you send in another, you know, $1000 worth, but for you to now recover those $1000 will be much easier because you already have a large base of people in your list already, right? So things will get easier. But at least in the beginning stages, it means that you need to make at least about $40 or so per sale. So if you're going to be starting out by promoting low priced offers, like a $10, $13, $17 kind of product, it's going to be a little difficult for you. You can make money in that only when you have a large base of, you know, uh, uh, in your list. So this brings me to a very key point, which is that the kind of offer you choose, whether it's a low ticket or a high ticket offer, is a very, very important uh, thing to consider again in upping your affiliate marketing game. Right, so I hope you found this useful. Please mention in the comment section below which of these metrics uh, is something that is proving particularly challenging for you or which of these are working particularly well for you. And uh, I hope you found this uh, session useful and I hope you're finding value in this entire series. If so, please click on the subscribe button below so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And uh, in my next video, I will be actually getting into this topic that we just touched upon today, which is how to choose the right offer so that you can make the maximum money for all your efforts and uh, you get the maximum returns for all your efforts. Okay, so till then, see you, bye-bye and have a nice day.